Hi, I'm Hillary from JScreen, and I'm joined by genetic counselor Daniela, who's going to help walk us through inheritance patterns and what that means. So there are many different types of inheritance patterns, and she's going to go over the three main ones and discuss what that means for the different genetic diseases, and some of which are more common in people with Jewish ancestry. So Daniela, thanks for being here, and I'm really interested to learn some more. Thanks, Hillary. So I think the, the three that I'm going to focus on today are um, what are called autosomal recessive, autosomal dominant, and X-linked. And I'll explain what those words mean because I know they're sort of, some people might remember them from their middle school biology. <laughs> I'm having bad flashbacks right now. <laughs> um, so let's start with autosomal recessive. So let's break down that word. Autosomal basically just means it's not associated with the, the sex chromosomes, the chromosomes that are what determine a person's uh, gender, biological gender. Um, so they, those conditions fall on the other chromosomes that exist in both male and females. So it, there's no gender bias with these mm -hmm. conditions. And recessive just means that essentially you need to have two non-working copies of that gene for that person to be affected. So we have two copies of every gene in our body. We get one from mom and one from dad. Sometimes people are born with what's called a mutation, which is like a typo, a spelling error in the gene. Mm -hmm. um, so it, for autosomal recessive conditions, having one mutation, so one working copy and one non-working copy is not enough to actually have the disease. You actually need to inherit two non-working copies. So you get one mutation from mom and one from dad. And then this person is going to have the, that condition, the disease. Um, so diseases that are going to be most familiar to people, recessive conditions, right. things like cystic fibrosis, sickle cell mm -hmm. anemia, Tay-Sachs. Those are the diseases that generally people are most familiar with because either when they're family planning or when they're of a certain age or they're dating or they get married, especially in certain ethnic groups like Ashkenazi Jews or Sephardic Jews or... Um, uh, even people of Southeast Asian ancestry, there are certain conditions that just are more common in those individuals. And so when they are marrying someone of a similar or like ethnicity, we want to be informed to know are both of these partners carriers, mm -hmm. which would be having one mutation and one working copy for the same condition. Because if they are, right, if this is one parent and this is the other, right. there's a chance that, a 25% chance that they have a child that's born with, with that condition. And, and, and I think that's such an important point because most people think, you know, with J Screen's genetic test, we test for so many diseases, like you're undoubtedly gonna be a carrier for something. Yes. But really what you're explaining is that it only matters with these recessive diseases when both partners are a carrier of the same disease, then they're at risk to pass it on. That's absolutely true. So when somebody is a carrier, that person most of the time doesn't have any symptoms and is not affected. Right. They have a chance of having a child that's a carrier, but if their partner is not a carrier for the same condition, there's no chance that they can pass it on. Having a, yeah, they can have a child with that disease. So yes, it's only really significant when both parents are carriers for the same condition. Got it. Um, so that's autosomal recessive. There's no gender bias. So men mm. and women can equally pass on and carry these conditions. And the big take home message would be that both parents need to be carriers for there to be a risk to the, to the child. Um, autosomal dominant, again, there's that word autosomal. <clears throat> and autosomal, again, no gender bias. So they don't sit on the, the sex chromosomes, the X and the Y chromosome. And what autosomal dominant means is that you only need one mutation out of the, again, two genes. Mm -hmm. One gene is not working properly. One gene has that, this mutation for that person to be affected or to have the disease. So this is where we see a big shift from, you know, both parents need to right. be carriers or sort of that two person interaction to really just the one. Mm -hmm. And Diseases that are going to be more commonly known um, that are autosomal dominant are going to be hereditary cancer predisposition. So the BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene, other genes that can cause a higher risk for uh, developing certain types of cancers, um, conditions like achondroplasia, so dwarfism. 
um, are all autosomal dominant conditions. And all that means is that then this person has one non-working copy and one working copy. And in this case, again, it's just a single person, single parent or single person dependent where anybody that is a carrier, again, is gonna have that condition. And there's a 50% chance of passing that condition on to a child and a 50% chance of not passing on that condition to a child. So the partner, in this particular circumstance, is irrelevant. Right, yeah, They're very right, relevant right. as a human, but in this circumstance, in terms of disease, uh, passing on this condition, they are not relevant. So with recessive, you mentioned that people are asymptomatic being carriers, but this is different because with dominant, you, you yourself can actually have symptoms of that yes. disease. Yes, absolutely. And like in, in the BRCA cancer, uh, hereditary cancer yes. space, what that symptom is, is actually an elevated risk for cancer. Right. Those people are, are perfectly healthy in terms of, you know, as a person, they're healthy, but they have a higher risk of developing certain types of yep. cancer. And that's sort of the, the symptom in that case. And then, um, so last but not least, X-linked, um, mm -hmm. inheritance. So that's actually something that is, ha has a gender bias or those conditions actually are associated with the sex chromosomes. So women have two X chromosomes and men have typically, and men have X, one X and a Y. Mm -hmm. And so X linked conditions are conditions that are caused by mutations or other sort of genetic disruptions on the X chromosome specifically. Um, the most commonly known one is, is fragile X, which is the most common inherited form of intellectual disability. Right. It typically affects boys because with women that have two X chromosomes, men only have one. So they have an X and a Y. Mm -hmm. So if you can imagine a woman that has, uh, that is a carrier for fragile X, that let's just say this X chromosome isn't working as well as this one. She's still got this one to sort of make up for that. Boys only have the one X. So when it's not working, there's no sort of backup. And that's what causes them to have that condition. And so generally X linked conditions are the ones that historically we've, we've heard described as, you know, only affecting boys or it's passed on from mother to son. Um, things like hemophilia is another, uh, uh, a bleeding condition that is also X-linked. And so mm -hmm. typically women that are carriers will maybe show some symptoms, but are much less severe, maybe even completely not noticeable, whereas boys will be much more severely affected. Um, boys get their, their Y chromosome from their dads and their X chromosome from their moms and girls get one X from mom and one X from dad. So that's why this is something that's passed on from mother to son directly. And the mother to daughter, again, you have a chance of being a carrier or of actually being unaffected as, as a daughter of a mother who's a carrier, if that makes sense. That one was a little complex. No, definitely. I feel like the way you explain it makes it so much more interesting and people would have paid a lot more attention in their bio classes years ago. <laughs> So this was great. So Daniela just explained three main types of inheritance patterns that you know deal with many of the diseases we do in cancer genetic testing, as well as reproductive genetic testing. Um, and thank you for explaining that. It really did answer a lot of questions that uh, people ask us all the time about you know the different types of diseases and you know who's at risk and you know it eases some fears about do I have this myself or am I only at risk of passing it on and mm -hmm. just gave us some more clarity. But thank you again for being here and stay tuned for the next session uh, with Daniela, who's going to answer some more of our burning questions. Thanks.